Namaste, everybody. I'll begin today's broadcast with chanting on. Stay. I want to welcome you to today's Facebook Live broadcast. Today, what I'll be talking about is the combination of Vata and Pitta. And uh, in previous talks that I've given, I've discussed both Vata and Pitta and Kappa uh, in their individual forms, which is relevant if, uh, if you are predominantly of one type or you have an imbalance that is predominantly of one type. Many, many people are a combination. And if you are a combination, then you have to understand the complexity of how these two doshas interact with each other so that you can both prevent disease and also manage disease if you, uh, if you have them. Okay? So uh, we'll run this program the way that I, I usually do. If you've seen my past videos, I'll talk for about 20 minutes on the subject, and then if you have questions at any time, please go ahead and type your questions into the, uh, into the, the area for, for chatting, and I will receive those questions, and then I'll address those uh, toward the end. So uh, why don't we go ahead and begin, and we'll just start with uh, a little review of both Vata and Pitta, because we have to understand these two doshas in order to be able to understand how they interact with each other. Now, the vata dosha is made up of the two elements, air and ether. And so vata dosha has certain qualities. And these qualities, the main ones, are qualities such as cold, and dry, and light, being mobile, being, being sharp. There are 10 pairs of opposite qualities. And if you want to keep vata in balance, you have to understand what qualities are out of balance within you. Pitta dosha is made up of fire and water. And fire and water tend to be hot. They also tend to be a little bit moist. And the reason I say a little bit moist is because uh, fire is dry. But because it's got a little bit of water that makes up the dosha, it's about 90% fire and 10% water. Uh, because of that, it's a little bit on the moister side. So for instance, people with a pitta nature tend to get oily skin, and people with a pitta imbalance may get an oily type of acne because that could be increasing, and you could wind up with too much, uh, too much uh, uh, pitta in your skin, too much oil in your skin and heat. So pitta tends to be hot. It also tends to be a little bit moist. Uh, it's, it's quali it's, it's characterized as being light, but it's not as light as the vata dosha is, which is why People with a pit in nature tend to have a more moderate body type. It's not heavy, uh, but it is, it, it is cat categorized as being light. It also tends to be mobile. Uh, if you look at a flame, a flame is dancing all the time. It rarely ever stays still. Now, it doesn't have the force of mobility that vata has, but it is easily moved by the air. And so because of that, we say that vata, that pitta, is mobile, but another word that you could use would be unstable. It's very easy to move the pitta dosha. And the pitta dosha is sharp. It's another quality of pitta. So for instance, when pitta gets out of balance, their tongue could become too sharp. They can get angry or say things that are not so uh, nice, say things that are pointed. And so uh, that's where the, the sharp quality comes in. So both vata and pitta share certain qualities. So for instance, uh, both of them are sharp. And so the nature of Vata's sharpness is that it's more like a needle and Pitta's is more like a dagger, but they're both sharp. So for instance, uh, the sharpness of being irritated is very Vata-like, but the sharpness of being angry is very uh, Pitta-like. They both have that sharp quality. Now, they both have a mobile quality as well. Pitta, vata is the force of mobility, whereas pitta is easily moved. And so they share that quality about them. 
Vata is light and Pitta is not heavy. Pitta is in between, it's more moderate. And so because of that, when they combine together, Vata and Pitta combination tends toward lightness rather than toward being more moderate or toward heaviness. Vata is only, Vata is very dry. Pitta is only slightly moist. And when they combine together, the dry quality tends to win. And a combination Vata-Pitta tends to be more dry by nature. Now, anything that mixes with fire becomes hot. So when Vata and Pitta come together, even though Vata tends to be cold and Pitta tends to be hot, it's the heat that tends to win out. So a person of Vata-Pitta nature experiences the heat of Pitta. So if we were to summarize this, we would say that a person with a vata pitta nature has certain tendencies. Now this is their prakriti, their constitution. They came into the world with a tendency to be hot, to be drier, lighter, moister, and sharper. Another way to look at it would be like a hot vata. They tend to have all the qualities of vata, but they also tend to be warm. They also tend to be warm. It's called usna vata, meaning a warm vata. Okay. And so some of the vatas who are out there who tend to be warm wonder, why am I warm? It's because you have a combination of these two. Now, you can also develop an imbalance, a vikriti, or a current state where both of these doshas tend to go out of balance. And when that happens, the tendency is for uh, these doshas to, to, to increase in the same way, with the same quality. So the tendency, again, is to become warmer, drier, lighter, and more mobile. Understanding the qualities is essential, because if you understand the qualities, then that allows you to understand what it takes in order to bring you back into balance. So, for instance, if you're a vata pitta with a vata pitta imbalance, you tend to be warm, you will need coolness in order to get back into balance. You say, yeah, but I've got so much vata, but you still need the coolness. And you can tell that because you tend to feel warmer. And we'll get into an exception to that in a moment. Now, you also will need more moistness, more oils in your diet, more oils applied to your skin to antidote that dry quality. You need nourishment to antidote the light quality. Nourishment, I mean, uh, more substantial foods, that tends to make things heavier. And the heavy quality antidotes the light quality. So you need foods of substance. So I'll get into that in more detail in a moment too. And then you need more stability to balance the mobility. And so for instance, not moving so quickly. Uh, regular routines, ways to create more stillness in your life uh, and less uh, less spontaneity, perhaps you could say, or perhaps um, not being as impulsive, okay? And to antidote the sharp quality, you need the dull quality. Now, when we think of the word dull, we don't tend to think we want to be more dull. But if you're overly sharp, you do want to be a little bit more dull, okay? Which means you can look in, in nature for things that tend to have a dullness to them that will... Uh, maybe antidote your sharpness. So for instance, we we'll use a food as an example. Yogurt tends to be dulling. It has a dull quality to the body and a dull quality to the mind. If you eat too much of it, you'll become maybe too heavy, maybe a little bit too uh, uh, lethargic, but that has a dull quality to it. And so if you are too sharp, then uh, having things and substances that tend to have a dull quality to them uh, will help. Milk also tends to have a dull quality, okay? So these are the ways in which you begin to think about yourself in Ayurveda. You ask yourself, not only what elements make me up, not only what doshas am I made out of, but what qualities are disturbed within me? And if you can understand the qualities, then you understand the treatment. In fact, as a vata pitta, I've given you the most common combination of qualities and how they usually interact but it's not always that way right our bodies didn't read the book and, and and learn what they were supposed to do so while a hot vata is the most common form of vata pitta combination you can also have 
a unique balance of qualities. So for instance, you could be cold and maybe uh, more, more moist, okay? It's just not likely. It's just not likely. So that's the usual combination. And when we think about diet and trying to bring balance to a person of Vata Pitta, we need to understand the tastes and how the six tastes affect these two doshas. So the Vata taste typically benefits from being sweet, uh, benefits from foods that are going to be sweet, sour, and salty. These three tastes balance the Vata dosha. Uh, the, do the taste that balance the Pitta dosha are tastes that are going to be sweet, bitter, and astringent. Now, what do they have in common? What they have in common is that sweet taste. The sweet taste balances both of these doshas. And that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That may be the only thing that you need to know because the sweet taste has the quality of being heavier. The sweet taste has the quality of being moister. The sweet taste has the quality of being cooler. The sweet taste has the quality of being dull. The sweet taste tends to produce stability. All the qualities that I've talked about so far that tend to go out of balance in a person of vata pitta nature all of these qualities are in the sweet taste. And so this is the one taste that balances both doshas. So if you have a vata, pitta, prakriti, you will need more of that sweet taste than any other taste. And if you have a vata, pitta, vikriti, an imbalance, then that should be the taste that you take in the most. Now, the other tastes conflict with each other. For instance, sour and salty tend to aggravate pitta and bitter and astringent tend to aggravate vata so these tastes should be taken in smaller amounts they should be taken in smaller amounts so you can um, have them in fact ayurveda teaches that we need all six tastes to some degree but it's different for everybody so a person of vata pitta nature needs more of the sweet taste and less of all the other tastes the one taste that tends to bat that tends to disturb both doshas is the pungent taste. If it's too hot, if it's pungent, it's too hot, it's too dry, it's too sharp, it's too stimulating. So that taste needs to be taken in, in small amounts. But interestingly, because the sweet taste is so heavy, it's also difficult to digest. And so because of that, a person needs some pungent taste in their meal in order to digest that sweet taste. So even the pungent taste can be taken in small amounts as well with all the other tastes. Now, when I say the sweet taste, of course, I don't mean ice cream, cookies, and candy. What I mean by the sweet taste are those foods that are the most nourishing for the body. They're made up of earth and water. That's what makes up the sweet taste. So these foods are going to, going to be things such as root vegetables. They have more earth in them, uh, not the leafy greens but the vegetables should be the roots, the ones that grow deep into the earth. They have a heavier, duller quality about them. Nuts also have a more sweeter, nourishing taste. Dairy has a sweet, nourishing taste. Milk is maybe one of the best foods that a person of vata and pitta nature can take. Now, I know when you think about milk, sometimes people think about getting mucusy and things like that. A person with a vata pitta imbalance tends to be dry. They tend not to get mucus from having milk. But the milk does need to be taken properly. It should be taken warm, and it should be taken with spices like cardamom and ginger to aid its digestion and reduce any mucus that might form. So milk is one of the best foods for a person of vata and pitta nature. Now, it's not only um, uh, that that milk balances, you know, that milk has the right taste, it's sweet, it has the right qualities. But in addition to that, milk builds ojas. Now, I want to talk a moment about ojas. Ojas is that which stabilizes your body and stabilizes the mind. It's what protects you against disease. Ojas has heavier qualities, cooler qualities, moister qualities, uh, duller qualities. It is everything that a vata pitta does not have. In other words, a person of a vata pitta nature will tend to destroy their ojas. Think of ojas as 
a substance in your body and in your mind. And its job is to create stability. Its job is also to create contentment in the mind. So it's nourishing you and making you more stable in your body and your mind. It supports your immune system. But when a person has a vata pitta imbalance, that ojas tends to get destroyed because vata and pitta has the opposite qualities when they combine together as ojas does. So a person with a vata pitta nature is the most likely to burn out or dry out and they get exhausted and they get weak and they start developing sickness and imbalances in their body. So when that happens, ojas needs to be restored in the body. And so that sweet taste is the best taste for building the ojas in the body. Now, uh, in addition to diet and making sure you take a nourishing, sweeter diet, comfort foods, but not the junk comfort foods, the, the, the nourishing, deeply richer foods that really support your body. I'm not talking about white sugars and, and, and things like that. Try to get it from, from all the good quality food that's out there. Now, uh, in addition to that, a lifestyle of rest is very important. Otherwise, pitta will burn out and pitta will dry out, or vata pitta rather will burn out and vata pitta will dry out. When that happens, the person starts becoming much more irritable, much more sensitive to the environment. Uh, they start even losing their drive when the ojas becomes low. The ojas becomes low, even though they used to have a lot of energy, they don't have it now. Okay? So they need more rest. The rest allows you to replenish your body. Think of that ojas as a bank account, and your bank account has gone bankrupt, and you need to start saving money. You need to start saving ojas. So you do that through rest and nourishing yourself properly. So you may even need an extended period of rest and an extended period of nourishing yourself properly in order to rebuild your body and to rebuild your mind, to get that mental stability and support your immune system, support homeostasis in your body. Because when it just drops, homeostasis falls apart. Balance falls apart in your body. You could start getting heart problems and heart irregularities and blood pressure issues go up and down. Stability has been lost. Now, in addition, regular routines build that stability. Try to make sure that you have regular routines, healthy routines, and try to repeat them Have each day, get up at the same time, go to sleep at the same time, eat at the same time. Those are the basic routines of your day that you wanna make sure are steady and stable. Very important. Now, exercise is important, but you don't wanna over-exercise. Remember, your ojas is low. Exercise can actually deplete you further. It's using the little bit of energy reserve you have left. So you want to exercise, but do something a little calmer and a little cooler. Do some gentle yoga. Do some Tai Chi. Do some gentle form of movement. But this is not the time. Even if you were a runner, to be running, you may need to take some time off. If you were doing some very uh, uh, aggressive yoga forms, this would not be the time to do that this would be a time to explore gentler uh, yoga. Now, uh, in addition, if you are practicing yoga and yoga is part of Ayurveda, then you may want to be meditating. Meditation is very good. It calms the body, it calms the mind. It's gonna support you if you are eating an ojas building diet to preserve that ojas. It's very, very good. So it's good for creating the quietude within. Now that doesn't mean very, very long periods of meditation. You don't have to meditate three times a day for, for 45 minutes, but you do wanna do some meditation each day, just a small amount, okay? Small amount every day is going to support you. If you're doing uh, pranayama, doing alternate nostril, pranayama would be the best form for you. It's the most balancing when you have a mixed dosha disturbance. Try to avoid more aggressive forms of pranayama. Try to avoid the palabhati and uh, uh, more, more aggressive forms. We say that even though they're beautiful, they have their place, they also can deplete the ojas if you're in a weakened state when you do these more advanced, more aggressive practices. Wait until your ojas starts to uh, build back up again. And so uh, these are, are some of the key tips that you should be following 
uh, in order to balance the vata pitta dosha. Now, I want to just say one more thing. People with a vata pitta combination also have some gifts. Okay, they also have some gifts, special gifts that nobody else has. When you're in balance as a person of vata pitta, then you can fly like the wind with great focus. Pitta gives you your focus and vata gives you the ability to fly like the wind. When you live a lifestyle in harmony, a lifestyle in balance, then you are able to uh, accomplish the greatest amount in the shortest period of time. Uh, if you are in balance, you maintain a lightness of heart, even while you are focused. If you are in balance, your more sattvic nature is emerging once you learn to balance these two doshas. And the more sattvic nature allows you to be an extraordinary leader and guide for others, as well as to have a, a bubbly enthusiasm that will inspire others. And enthusiasm comes from the vata nature and the uh, uh, capacity to lead comes from the pitta nature. So everybody has their own balance of the, uh, uh, of the three doshas within them. And hopefully now, if you have a vata pitta combination, you have a way to, at least some direction to take care of yourself. Now I want to take some of your questions. And so uh, I had my assistant bring me some questions that you've been uh, typing in. And so uh, I'll begin with uh, what about the combination of cold and dry? Well, if you're cold and dry, that's more purely a vata imbalance. Okay, if you're cold and dry, that's a more pure vata imbalance. Now, I did a Facebook Live event, which is on our Facebook uh, uh, library of videos that you can watch just on how to balance the vata dosha. But you know if you're cold and dry, then you need the opposite qualities. You need warm and moist, and that's going to be the key. You know, it's important to live according to the doshas. It's really important to understand the elements, but it's most important to understand the qualities that are disturbed within you, and then to live in opposition to those qualities in order to bring them back into balance. Now, another question is, what if you are cold and you do have excess moisture? What if you're cold and you do have excess moisture? Well, you know, most people who are cold and have excess moisture, especially if you have a lot of extra, extra moisture, tend to have a combination of vata and kappa. And we're going to be doing a Facebook Live event soon on that combination. So I can talk about what happens when vata and kappa mix together and how would you manage that. They're both cold. And that's really the, 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 the key. They're both cold. And so you need more warmth. And warmth does tend to dry you out over time. And so that's a good way to bring it back into balance, okay? So things like the pungent taste, for instance, uh, become more beneficial. What are the next best food sources if milk is not an option for a vata pitta? That's a really good question. Some people, they're just lactose intolerant. If you're lactose intolerant, you really cannot tolerate uh, cow's milk. If you're not lactose intolerant, it may be that you're using a low quality milk, in which case you either want to try raw milk, which is going to be the best and it's available in all the marketplaces in California. But I know it's not available all over the world, but if you can get raw milk, you will tend to digest that much, much better. Uh, also, if you can uh, get milk from uh, E2 cows, now that's a big subject, but there are certain cows from Europe and from India that make a little different form of milk that has a little a few different differences in its protein. So it's called A2 milk. If you can get A2 milk, that's usually digested better as well. Uh, but if you can't, then what do you do? Well, you have to look for your oja somewhere else. I don't even like to say that other milks will replace milk. They're not milk. You're using soy milk, uh, almond milk, um, oat milk. It's not milk, right? So it's, it's something different. It's not going to replace milk. You, it, it'll, it can replace milk in your diet. You can have it with your cereal. You can drink it. But it's not going to replace your oats to the degree that milk does. You might want to try goat milk and see how you do with goat milk. But, you know, with lactose intolerance, that's hard too. Uh, and if you can't, you just need to look for other ways to build your oats. And you can get that through grains. You can get that through nuts. 
people who are very, very depleted, who are very ill, that's the only time that we recommend uh, meat sources in order to build your OGIS. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, those are your options. You wanna, you wanna get it from the root vegetables as well. Uh, mung, mung beans help to build your OGIS. And of course, oils, I didn't mention oils. Oils build your OGIS and ghee is wonderful. Uh, ghee is the best oil for the vata pitta combination and you can take lots of it. And ghee people don't react to, even though ghee comes from milk. Even if you're lactose intolerant, you can usually do just fine with ghee because uh, ghee doesn't have lactose in it. And so people tend to digest that very well. But if you're vegan and you still don't want ghee, then other oils will help to build uh, your ojas. Now the question came up, is hot yoga good for vata pitta? Hot yoga is not good for vata pitta because people with a vata pitta nature tend to have the quality of being hot. You're like a hot vata, all right? And so they tend to be hot and they tend to be dry. And hot yoga tends to heat you up and dry you out. <laughs> and it's really not what you wanna be doing. Uh, of course, the heat is obvious, but when you're in a hot environment, you are going to tend to dry yourself out. Now, I know that you wanna stay well hydrated when you're in the room, and you do stay well hydrated within the room, and that's all important. In Ayurveda, we say that you never expose the skin to heat to high temperatures of heat unless it's been oiled first. So if you're gonna do hot yoga, try oiling your body first. That's if you're a vata, and because it can be great for a vata, but oil your body first and then do hot yoga. And, uh, and then it's gonna be, be, be much better, but not for vata, pitta uh, combination. Uh, in your opinion, how big a role does the vata dosha play in weight loss or lack or, or lack thereof, weight retention. Well, well, vata can play a great role in weight loss. Vata's quality is lightness. So as vata increases, weight is gonna drop. Uh, in the Kappa program that I, that I completed, that is on uh, Facebook, I took all about how to uh, uh, reduce the Kappa dosha and thus reduce weight. Now, vata does play a role in that because uh, vata can cause Kappa to go out of balance. So when we talk about the Vata Kappa program, that's when I'll address that unique situation. It's a fascinating situation. Now, another question is, uh, can you recommend something to boost my immune system, please? Build your OGIS. Build your OGIS. Do everything I've talked about to build your OGIS because that's going to boost your immune system. And then I would uh, finally say, uh, see an Ayurvedic practitioner because if your immune system is out of balance, uh, it's great to listen to these videos. And I love that you, you, you are interested uh, working one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner is always the best thing to do. Always the best thing. So find a local practitioner. That's the best way to be getting the ongoing care that your body needs. What's the best way to build up OGIS if suffering from Bovada Pitta imbalance with Candida overgrowth and you're not allowed to take dairy? When we talk about Candida, we usually think of Kappa imbalances. Okay? We usually think of Kappa imbalances. And so, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it tends to have a moist quality that, that uh, candida grows within. It grows in a moist environment. But there are some people who have a vata imbalance who also have candida. And certain parts of the body, certain systems of the body can be uh, uh, moist, while even though the whole body tends to be uh, dry. Now, we need so much more information about that in terms of how that candida is manifesting in your body, whether it's systemic, whether it's digestive, whether it's vaginal. So once again, I would have to say, go ahead and seek out the care of an Ayurvedic practitioner and learn about your unique situation. And it might help for you when I talk about tridoshic imbalances, which I'll be doing as well in one of the upcoming uh, Facebook Live videos. Well, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to come and join us for the Facebook Live event. Uh, if you have questions, you are welcome to contact. You can type them in here too, and uh, I'll be I'll uh, try to address those uh, more personally to you, or one of my assistants will. If you have questions about Ayurvedic education, please feel welcome to contact the California College of Ayurveda either through our website. Questions online are fine, and you're also welcome to give us a call the old fashioned way and talk to one of our admissions counselors if you're interested in uh, uh, joining our programs. You're also welcome to learn 
about the many seminars uh, that I teach. Many of you know that I do I, I, yoga nidra teaching, training seminars all over the country. And it would be lovely to have you at one of those uh, programs. I want to wish you uh, great health and well-being. I want to wish you a deep sense of love in your heart, the capacity to be loved and the capacity to love others. And that happens when you take care of yourself. That happens when you build your ojas. And so first and foremost, live a lifestyle of harmony that is congruent with your constitution and any imbalances you have. When you return to normal, you will have the capacity to reach your full potential physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Many blessings to you on your continued journey. I'm going to conclude by chanting on. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om peace, peace, peace. Many blessings. Namaste.